Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to clean up your edges in Corel Painter and other digital painting applications. While you're painting, the edges of your artwork can take on a number of problems. For example, maybe your edges are too sharp. If we zoom in to this example, you can see that all of the edges are really sharp, and that's because the brush that I used was the scratchboard tool, which is a really hard edge brush. And this is kind of an intermediate version of this painting. This is like somewhere around halfway finished. So I haven't gotten to the point to where I'm gonna clean up my edges yet, but eventually what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll smooth out a lot of these edges so that it looks a little more natural. The opposite of sharp edges are edges that are too smooth. So maybe this edge for the mountains in the background is a bit too blurry. Maybe I blurred it too much and I wanna know how to sharpen it again. How do I do that? Another issue you can have with edges is called aliasing. And that's when the edge is kind of jagged and looks like stairs, like you can see in this example here around this bucket. So that's an edge that I would want to clean up. And last but not least, if we look at the fish up close here, you can see the dreaded white fringe. And this happens for a number of reasons when you're painting. So we'll want to get rid of that as well. So now that we know what to look for, let's discuss how these edges get created in the first place. I'm going to zoom back into the fish here. I'm going to select the fish body layer. That's this layer here and I'm going to select the Distorto brush, and I'm going to pull out some of the fish's body here. And you can see if I do it in one of these dark areas, by distorting it or smudging it around, I'm creating some white fringe. This happens with all of the distortion brushes. If I use bulge, it's creating fringe. If I use pinch, it's creating fringe. Now, not everybody uses these distortion brushes, but I use them a lot to kind of refine my edges. So I'm constantly fighting this white fringe, but fortunately I have some tips for how to fix it. This also coincides with making edges too sharp. When you're using something like the pinch brush or the distortion brush, you're pinching the pixels together, which is really making them as sharp as possible. And as I mentioned earlier, there's brushes like the scratchboard tool that always make sharp edges. Now, if we wanna take a look at the opposite, which is edges that are too soft or too blurry, we can take something like the diffuse blur blender and we can blend, and that's making the edge way too soft. That's kind of an extreme example. If we use something like the Blur Blender, we won't blur it quite as much, but it's still going to create kind of a strange edge. In this case, it almost looks darker in some areas where I don't want it to look darker. If we take a look at this bucket example, it has these jagged edges, and this can happen for a number of reasons. It mainly has to do with the resolution of your image. So if you're working at a really small resolution, then things like ovals and diagonal lines are always going to look jagged no matter what. In this case, I'm working with a pretty high resolution image, so this shouldn't look jagged at all. The culprit here is the oval selection tool. If I draw a selection and I fill it, you can see that along the edges, they're very jagged. So really what I should have used here is the oval shape tool because that ends up being a vector shape, which is a lot smoother. However, it's worth mentioning that if you were to right click on this layer and then convert it to a default layer, it's no longer a vector. And so that means now it's vulnerable to getting jagged again. So if I were to do something like transform this using free transform and then scale it down, I'm throwing away a lot of the pixels or a lot of the information. And if I were to scale it back up again, then I'm going to get these horrible blocky edges that are also kind of blurry. So typically if you scale something down and then you scale it back up again, that's going to increase the chance that you're gonna get blocky edges. So make sure to be very careful when you're scaling things up and down. Really the best thing to do is always keep a backup of that layer just right click on it and duplicate it. Hide one of your duplicates and then select the layer that you wanna transform, transform it down. And then if you decide later that maybe that was too small, just delete that layer, go back to your original, duplicate it again, and just repeat that process. That way you're not risking corrupting your original layer. And again, as I mentioned, the initial resolution that you choose for your document is really gonna determine how jagged these edges get a lot of the time. So you'll wanna work with a high resolution anytime you can. In addition to blending and distorting to get these edges, you can also get them by merging layers that have different composite methods. So if I go to my fish here and I go back to that body layer and I right click on it, choose select layer content, create a new layer, and then maybe I fill it with a darker color like this, I'm going to be covering up my fish and I can change the composite method to something like multiply. That way we can see through the tinting to the layers beneath. I'm gonna go ahead and deselect that selection with control D. And if we zoom in, you can see that all along the edges, we have a little bit of white fringe. This may become more pronounced the more layers that you add. 
and it becomes especially obvious when you merge those layers together. So I'm going to merge the tinting layer with the layer beneath, and let's watch over here on this left edge and see what happens. I'm going to merge with Control e and all of a sudden that edge just doubled in brightness and became a lot more obvious. So zooming out, you might think, well, that's not such a big deal, it's just a little bit of an edge, but it really starts to stand out, and it almost kind of ruins your image, and just doesn't look right. So now let's take a look at some different ways to clean up each of these edge problems here. So I'm gonna keep using my fish body layer as an example here. Let's clean up this soft edge because that's probably one of the easiest ones to clean up. I'm going to select the pinch distortion brush and I'm just going to paint back and forth over that edge just to kind of pinch it back together like so. Now you can see I cleaned up that soft edge. Maybe I'll clean this up. Now if I wanna reverse that, if the edge is too sharp, then I can blend it in a number of ways. If you want a very subtle blend, I recommend the Blur Blender. And I can just blur over that and it softens it just a little bit. It does a really great job of softening the edge and making it look more natural. However, it's adding that white fringe. So how do we get rid of that white fringe? Well, there's a number of ways to do that. First, you could try playing with the composite methods. Here in Corel Painter, there's the Gel Cover Composite Method, which does a pretty good job of making that white edge go away. It doesn't always get the whole thing, but it does a pretty decent job. You can see it eliminated it over here on the right side pretty well. If I change it back to a normal layer, you can see that edge come back. You can also try Multiply. However, Multiply tends to blend with the background in a way that doesn't always work. You could try the Gel Cover Method as well. That's very similar to Multiply. So it's kind of making the fish transparent, and that's not exactly what I want. I think for this example, gel cover works pretty well. However, the problem is, for me at least, I work back and forth between Photoshop and the gel cover composite method is not compatible with Photoshop. So it ends up getting converted to multiply, which doesn't work. But since this won't work for everyone, I'm gonna show you a few more tricks for getting rid of this fringe. One is you could turn on preserve transparency, which will lock the transparent background from being painted on. And you could just select that color from right near the edge and simply just paint over that edge. That works pretty well. I can do that down here on this edge as well. So that works pretty well if you're not worried about covering up detail along your edges. I'd recommend if you're gonna use the distortion brush to use it before you do any shading or texturing or coloring to your image. And a lot of the time what I'll do to avoid the white fringe issue is I'll just wait to merge layers until the very end of the composition and then I'll just choose drop all layers to merge everything all together into a single layer then you won't have any issues with composite methods changing or adding fringe or anything like that. Once it's a single flat layer, you can go in and you can blend your edges as much as you like. However, then you have to worry about while you're blending the fish, you're also blending the background. If I'm blending the girl, I'm also blending the dock. If I blend the bucket, I'm blending the dock and so on. So that's not always the best way to work. The final technique for removing white fringe and cleaning up the edge requires you to have Photoshop. So I've gone ahead and loaded this as a PSD into Photoshop. And let's navigate down to our fish body layer, which you can see here. It has that horrible white fringe along the edge. So what we can do is we can go ahead and hold control and click on the little icon here next to the body layer. That'll put a selection around that edge. And then we'll click on the add mask icon to add a mask. Next, we'll look in the properties panel for mask edge. We'll click on that. And this gives us an option to shift the edge, which will just kind of erode or eat away at the edge a very small amount. And I'm just going to shift that all the way to negative 100%, and you can see that that made that edge go away. It didn't add any unwanted softness to the edge, it didn't make it aliased, it didn't add more white fringe, and it didn't subtract too much from the piece to really ruin the edge. So that's working really well. I'll go ahead and just turn it back up and you can see exactly what it was doing here. It's just eating away at just those white pixels. If we click OK, and we've done an amazing job of cleaning up the edge. We can zoom into it all the way, and this is exactly how it should look. There's no distracting edges if we zoom out. So there you go. There's a few tips for cleaning up your edges in your digital paintings. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you'd like to learn more about painting with Corel Painter or editing with Photoshop, check out my video courses available on gumroad.com slash Aaron Rutten. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can get updates when I release new videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.